Hello, and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today, I'll be showing you how to cycle from Walworth in South London to Broadway Market in Hackney, North London. This ride takes about 40 minutes, and you can do the whole thing on quiet streets and protected cycle lanes. By public transport, the journey's more like 50 minutes with a change of train or bus required, so it's a lot more convenient to cycle. If you find this video useful, or you just enjoy watching it, then please don't forget to hit the bell icon and subscribe to the channel on YouTube, as I try to post new videos just like it every week. I'd also like to say a big thank you to the channel supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to join them in supporting the channel, then there's a link in the description of the video. All right, let's get going. So we're starting on the corner of Brandon Street and Browning Street in the Walworth Low Traffic neighborhood. And before we get underway, I'd just like to relay a message, which is Tony, if you're watching, happy birthday from Becca, who requested this video. And happy birthday from me as well. We're on the eastern side of Walworth Road in East Street Market, and the streets around here are very quiet, thanks to the LTN. You can see just up ahead the planters here, which are what's keeping the through traffic out of the area. And that's created a bit of public space here, which has got some potential to be made quite nice, I think. After we use the lights to cross Walworth Road, we go onto Manor Place and we go under a viaduct which is carrying a railway that carries Thameslink trains, northbound to Elephant and Castle and Blackfriars and southbound to Loughborough Junction. Don't miss this turning into Crampton Street which has an interesting mix of different building styles on and also coming up on the left an inviting looking neighbourhood cafe with outdoor seating. But probably the most interesting feature are these Victorian tenement blocks on the left these were previously quite a common site in London, but most have been knocked down. These ones are called the Pollens Buildings, and they actually featured in the film The King's Speech as a backdrop for 1930s London. If the local council wants to improve cycling links around here, one thing they could do would be to remove the chicane we just went through, as well as the chicane at the other end of the Draper's estate. It would really help to make this area a lot more cycle permeable, uh, because you can't really cycle through it currently due to the chicanes and also the lack of drop curbs and narrow paths. As you can see, we've done a bit of a dog leg here. We've come out of the estate and then doubled back on ourselves around Hampton Street in order to avoid dismounting and dealing with another chicane exiting the street. We're now going to use a toucan crossing to cross the funnily named Newington Butts. Apparently, the name comes from an old word referring to an odd corner of land near a road. Alternatively, some people have suggested it could refer to a place where you practice archery. You might notice that we're briefly following uh, CS7 signs here. They're on the floor and on the pavement. This is, um, I've used it in the previous videos. It is a, uh, a useful bypass around Elephant and Castle on quiet streets. Um, I think it's excellent, although Elliot's Row here does really need resurfacing. Some people have suggested that you can use the next road along, but I'm not convinced that it has as good a crossing into the cycle lane that we're about to use. So I tend to still go this way and just complain about the road surface. And of course, as we cross the road, here is that excellent cycle lane I was talking about. This is part of Cycle Super Highway 6 or Cycleway 6, which is a TFL route. And it's also known as the North South Cycle Super Highway, although we're actually going east west. If you ever look at a map of this area, you'll see that there's a really obvious place that you should extend the cycle lane here. If you built another 600 meters of cycle lane up St. George's Road and Westminster Bridge Road, it would link up to the existing lanes leading into Westminster Bridge. And that seems to me like a really obvious missing link. But for now that doesn't exist, so we're gonna be turning off right here onto Lambeth Road, which is a bus stand. When you're cycling here, keep an eye out for those buses, but when you're watching this video, look out on the left for that beautiful reflection in a puddle. We're coming up to St George's Circus now, and there's a protected crossing around a roundabout. On your right actually is Borough Road, we're not going that way today, but it's interesting to note that Lambeth Council does have some plans to put protected cycle lanes on that street. As far as I know, the plans are on hold because of TfL's budget crisis, and I think they were providing quite a lot of the cash. But if that happens, it will provide a direct protected link to Cycle Superhighway 7, which is another route. I actually don't use CS7 very much on this channel. There are some very good bits of it, 
I particularly like the section through Balham, and we did just use that bypass around Elephant and Castle, which is part of CS7, but there are also some bits that don't quite measure up. I'm planning to do a slightly different video sometime, just doing a full review of the route, so I can comment on all the different bits, good and bad. Now, if you keep an eagle eye on the right-hand side as we go under this railway bridge, you'll see it says Blackfriars Station and Charing Cross Railway. That's strange because Blackfriars Station is not here. In fact, it's actually pretty far up the road. Uh, but this actually used to be the site of Blackfriars Station. It was opened in 1864, but closed just five years later. It was replaced by Waterloo East Station, which is just a little to the west of here. This is probably a good time to note that you can download a map of the route. There's a link in the description and it gives you a GPS GPX file. That should work on whatever app or device you use. And if you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to hit subscribe and also the bell icon on YouTube so you get alerted to new videos when they're posted. And for those who'd like to support the channel, there's also a Patreon link in the description. Thank you very much to all of you who have signed up so far. I'm going to have a little rant about these black barriers here. They are to prevent vehicle attacks on the bridge and of course there were in recent memory uh, terror attacks using vehicles against pedestrians on bridges in London. Um, I don't think that these barriers make much sense though because you can use vehicles to attack pedestrians walking on the pavement anywhere. It doesn't have to be a bridge so it's not clear to me what the point in them is as anybody targeting pedestrians could just go anywhere else in the city. It feels to me more like a box ticking exercise than something that will actually make people safer and it does actually make the cycle lane much more difficult to use, especially at peak time where it causes a significant bottleneck. I've not seen it personally myself but I would not be surprised if there were regular collisions between cyclists coming in both directions at that point thanks to the barriers. Another change that I would make to the cycle lane around here, the section that we've just passed through when you come off the bridge. There are about three or four different sets of traffic lights in very quick succession and they're not synced up. It's actually reasonably common to have to stop at all of them on a red. That would be fine if people were actually using the crossings, but often you're just waiting at a red light and nobody's crossing. I think it would make more sense to, uh, to actually replace the signalled crossing across the cycle track with a zebra crossing so that cyclists would always have to stop for pedestrians when they needed to cross but when nobody was there they would be able to proceed. You could keep the signalled crossing across the main carriageway if you liked so as not to interfere with traffic timings. There's plenty of examples like here um, on these bus stops of zebras being used across cycle tracks and they seem to work quite well and I think people tend to be reasonably courteous although of course there are of course people who do break the rules. Now we have been following cycleway six, um, but we're actually gonna do something a little bit different in a minute. We follow it for a little bit now and we turn off left here. And remember when you're coming in the opposite direction, there's actually a segregated lane on the main road, but in this direction, it's actually a back street. Something interesting about Saffron Hill, underneath our feet here, actually this is the route that the london post office railway runs if you're not familiar with it that's actually an underground railway which was used to carry mail and parcels between different sorting offices in london it's no longer operational but you can actually visit a little working part of it nearby and i highly recommend it it's a really good day out it's attached to the postal museum now here unfortunately we see the bane of my life when recording these videos it's the 100 percent fiber broadband guys um, these guys dig up roads to install fibre broadband and then just leave them and nobody works on the sites for a long time. That would be none of my business if they also weren't extremely heavy handed at closing streets. Um, they love installing mini traffic lights and just completely closing the road. So uh, unfortunately that's not the last we'll hear of those guys. Um, but important turn here, we're not following CS6 which we would normally go left. We're actually turning right and looping back on ourselves crossing Farringdon Road and then going over the railway. Then we turn left down Farringdon Lane and through these tenement blocks. These are actually quite similar to the Victorian tenements we saw earlier in South London. We go down Pear Tree Court and we are actually in the Clerkenwell Green low traffic neighborhood here. This is um, an interesting part of town and if you've not been, I highly recommend a wander around on foot. It's really lovely. Uh, the surface of the road isn't fantastic, but we're winding ourselves around these quite magical, lovely little streets, actually. 
and we're doing that to essentially cut the corner of CS6. In previous videos, I have often followed Cycleway 6 up and then gone almost all the way to King's Cross, but if we go down Northampton Road and use a path cutting across Spa Fields, it actually cuts the corner. Um, and it's also quite a nifty little cycle lane going through here, although slightly ruined by the white van stopped on the double yellows at the dropped curb entrance. You continue down Rossiman Street and then take this protected contraflow lane. This is clearly a really old piece of infrastructure and actually the light here took a really long time to change. I'm not sure how they're triggered, whether or not it is a, uh, a standard time circuit or whether you're supposed to push a button. I couldn't see a sensor, but they did change eventually for me. So I think the best thing to do there is wait. Now, we've, we're going down Amwell Street, which isn't actually a very nice street to cycle on. It could probably do with a bus gate on it, actually, to keep it quiet, or possibly protected cycle lanes. There is, seems to be plenty of space there, but we're only on it for a short period of time before we turn off onto River Street. And this is now part of a low traffic neighborhood put in by Islington Council. And as a result, it's really, really quiet. Also, this square is massive. Look how big the gardens are in the middle, but also the width of the streets. That's actually pretty unusual for a purely residential square like this, I think. We are now following the route of Quiet Way 2, which is also known as Cycleway 27. And this is an old signposted route that TfL installed uh, a number of years ago that was made excellent when Islington essentially removed all the through traffic from virtually its entire route uh, through the borough. You can see that we are following the painted symbols on the road, which still say Q2 rather than C27. And also there are signposts at eye level as we cycle. Some of the turns can be a little bit difficult to spot. So it's a good thing you're watching this video so you know where to turn. If you've examined the map of this route I've planned out, you'll see that we're not taking the most direct possible route to Broadway Market here. We've actually gone straight up and then we've turned off at an angle, whereas you could actually go more or less directly up to Broadway Market, perhaps through the city of London to the east, and that would save you a little bit of distance. I don't think that that route is much quicker, but crucially, it's a lot less pleasant than cycling through these very quiet filtered streets and staying on segregated cycle lanes. I think one day it might be possible to do a more direct route and stay in very, very high quality, low traffic streets. That would require the City of London to get its act together and to remove through traffic from Beach Street. That was a street that was filtered during the pandemic, but unfortunately the uh, motor traffic restrictions were actually taken out. Um, there are plans to put them back in, but they have stalled. Whatever happens there, there needs to be a good north-south route through the City of London and a good east-west route through the City of London as well. Currently, there actually isn't really a traffic-free route. The city got a lot of stuff right during the pandemic, but actually they need to get their act together on a network of routes that connect to other safe routes to other parts of Greater London. That is currently missing, and we've had to bypass the square mile as a result. A quick note about Popham Street here, it's actually still a rat run, needs a filter on it, you can see these cars using it. And on the left, our old friends, the 100% fibre broadband guys, have closed the entire road and taken the lights out of action in order to apparently store their barriers they use for closing roads. This uh, video was filmed in the middle of the day on a weekday afternoon and yeah, there didn't seem to be any be working on any of those sites. I don't know why that is in this case, maybe there's a good reason, or maybe there isn't, but it seems to be quite common all over London, and has been for a couple of years now. On a more positive note, we're now cycling into what's got to be probably the largest selection of contiguous low traffic neighbourhoods in London, all bordering each other. We've got St Peter's, LTN, Canterbury West, Canterbury East, De Beauvoir, London Fields, Hoxton West, these are mostly Islington and Hackney basically bordering each other and removing through traffic from a huge swathe of inner North London. The only bit that probably comes close is Waltham Forest, the southern end of Waltham Forest around Walthamstow. Islington, believe it or not, also has plans for more LTNs in this part of the world. Um, I think they're planning new low traffic neighbourhoods either side of the Caledonian Road and as well as around Mildmay and Highbury New Park. 
they have been quite slow on coming forward with proposals on these but when they happen they will be extremely helpful for cycling in north london particularly if you want to do a direct journey between camden and islington or hackney in previous videos i've sent us down to king's cross from camden and then to come north again up to hackney just because of the quality of the cycle lanes and to avoid the main roads in the north but when this happens you'll be able to go a lot more directly and i think that'll encourage a lot more people who maybe currently have to take the north london line to cycle that route because it will really become a cycle that anyone can do the north london line if you've ever taken it in the mornings is absolutely rammed it's really at capacity so i guess that even people who are not planning to cycle it themselves will probably appreciate the extra breathing space they've got on the overground in the morning right back to the current route that was a bit of a diversion on the commentary so we're crossing the a10 here kingsland road and normally what i do in a lot of videos is i continue straight down middleton road and that takes us up to london fields but we're going to do something slightly different here we bear right onto haggerston road and this is going to take us a lot more directly to broadway market it's uh, still in a low traffic neighborhood though it's part of the london fields ltn so as you can see there really isn't any traffic on the left here keep an eye out for a really quite nice cycle cut through there's a cycle lane here i think this is a really good example of how a, uh, a road filter should be designed it has a lot of planting it has a lot of public space where people can just stand or sit and walk a continuous pavement but it also has demarcated space for cycling separate from the pedestrian bit to avoid conflict we come out here onto the beautiful albion square uh, lots of pretty trees and buildings here and then we head out onto the main road queensbridge road to be precise this is um, actually a, a good north-south route up through Hackney and it has protected cycle lanes on it but we're not going to be using them for too long because we immediately turn off into the interestingly named Shrubland Road and this is still part of the same low traffic neighbourhood hence the low traffic. Now this part of the route is quite twisty and turny and there are various roads that you can miss and remember if you think you might struggle to remember which way to go you can always download the GPS map and put it on your phone or app. And if you look at my shadow there, you can see that I am also consulting the map because I forgot which way to go as well. But it's not long now and you might be starting to recognize the streets if you know the area around Broadway Market quite well. When we get to Brogham Road, you need to keep an eye out on your left because there's going to be a, uh, a reasonably hidden path just after that big tree in the distance that we're going to cycle down and it's quite easy to miss and talking of trees if you look at the floor around here you'll notice that there's a lot of leaves on the ground despite it being mid-august when i filmed this video and that is because those trees have not lost their leaves because of the cold it's not autumn they've lost them because it's very very hot heat stress and uh, that's quite a scary thought really not something you see most years but as we emerge from benjamin close we are now on Broadway Market. If you've not been to Broadway Market before, I highly recommend it. It is a lovely little bit of London just off the Regent's Canal, so good for a walk. And it's particularly lovely since Hackney Council removed through traffic from it during the pandemic. It is now all about walking and cycling. So thank you very much for watching that, guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. I certainly enjoyed riding it. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and leave a comment letting me know what you think below. And if you really, really like the channel, you can also sign up to the Patreon. There's a link in the description below. Thank you very much and I will see you again next time.